EVs are the future, there is no denying it, but in the present, we've got quite a present for you, and it is hybrids, the worst of both worlds. Why are they <laughs> being pushed so aggressively and so thoroughly? I'm going to be uh, joined by my good friend Herbert, giggling in the background for me at my intros, as he sometimes does. I'm Brian. Welcome to Futuraza. Oh, 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 oh. So I got uh, Herbert here. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> And hybrids, man, you, yeah. uh, I don't present. know if you've had yeah. the, 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 you get the something dis- additional, right? From the right. normal ice. It's really is a gas car, but oh, by the way, we're going to give you a tiny little battery on top of all that. So it's a hybrid. <laughs> we're going to, we're going to give you a underpowered gas car with an underpowered electric motor yeah. and you're going to like it. <laughs> uh, so I don't know if you've had the displeasure of having to watch ads, but I travel a fair amount and in airports and hotels and whatnot, you sometimes stumble across traditional advertisements and a lot of them love to say the all new whatever with up to 611 miles of range. And you're like, oh, a hybrid. Yeah. So I guess they're pushing them. So let's take a look at this, uh, little, little gem we got here. This says the plug-in, this plug-in hybrid RV will offer 500 miles of anxiety-free range. Okay, an RV, I get it. Yeah. At least in this use case, I get it. Because if you take a Rivian van and convert it into a camper, you're getting 150 miles of range if you're lucky. And that is tough. Thor Industries, parent company of Airstream, just showed off this prototype. It's a yeah. hybrid. Yeah. Uh, thoughts on that? Oh, I love it. I mean, I was just looking up right now, Xiaomi uh, hybrids mm-hmm. in uh, the in China, right? Don't they? I'm just making sure. I Is it hi, Xiaomi or is that Neo? I think it's Xiaomi. Yeah. So there's several kinds of hybrids, right? There's the hybrid that like we just, I was joking around, right? It's an ICE vehicle. It's a gas car. They add a little tiny battery to it. They call it a hybrid. That's, you know, what we typically are aware of. There is a kind of hybrid that very few are doing, which is the larger vans like this one you're talking about, where they actually reverse the model, where it's primarily an electric vehicle, and then they use gas to charge the electric vehicle. The, it's by, more the of a range extender. A range extender. So for, for big giant form factors that want to go long range, like you're saying, it actually may not... May, it may, may be make sense, right? Because you're a bigger vehicle. But if you're a tiny little car comp car and you're stuffing, you're still a gas car and you're adding more, uh, you know, mechanics into it, you've got two drivetrains and all that. That just, it's ridiculous to, for people to realize, to think that that's best of both worlds. Right. When it's, yeah, the dumbest of both worlds. <laughs> uh, so this one is a little more uh, interesting, I would say. This says... Why the hype for hybrid cars will not last, Mm. fully electrics will win the race. This is from The Economist. And this is what you and I have been talking about for months, uh, years probably at this point. Uh, Worst of both worlds, greatest fire risk of any drivetrain. Right. I mean, even if you add the other two drivetrains together, it shouldn't be this um, Mm. prone to to being flamey. Uh, consumers are turning to hybrids partly because they're cheap. Big batteries required to go fully electric makes them far more expensive. And if you look at something like the Pacifica hybrid, if you were to take the battery out of that and put it into a full battery electric, which would then qualify for the $7,500 credit Mm -hmm. instead of the reduced $3,750 hybrid credit, it would take four or five of those to make an actual battery electric vehicle. Mm -hmm. So they're getting two, three times the federal incentives to put small batteries in. I do think that is a temporary situation and I hope automakers don't rely on it too much. Do you see a benefit to hybrids in this situation? Yeah. So, okay. So, you know, as you and I examine this and companies like uh, articles like this, look at it, they see the negatives, uh, you, you drive into it, but look at the benefits for the automakers, right? You're an ice maker, you're a gas maker. You throw in a little battery, some of them are able to get uh, the incentive, the federal incentive associated. I've been told that it's not as many hybrids as we're thinking it is. It's a a small group of hybrids that are able to qualify, but it's a way to do that. Now, it's also, so I'm I'm listing out benefits, but the benefits is to the ice maker, not to, to the automaker, not to the consumer. The benefit to the automaker, of course, is to fool the consumer. 
they're now able to say, hey, we're electric. Take a look at my electric vehicles. And how many, how many consumers actually know the drivetrain? They go, oh, does it have a gas car and electric? You know, are they, are they going to be tricked a little bit? Um, I don't know to, to that extent how, yeah, how yeah. much, how many and consumers I, will I be will fooled. You. I will tell you, on a test drive, all the consumers will be fooled because on a test drive, they're probably driving it as a pure electric. They haven't heard the motor kick on yet, uh, at least not often enough to understand what they're actually buying. I can understand if you live in a small community where there is no uh, uh, good access to public chargers and you don't have home charging, why this would be potentially better than a gas car, at least. But even that, I think, it comes down to, in a lot of cases, automakers are saying, well, people don't want to buy electrics, pure electrics. So, well, A, you don't want to build them, and B, your dealers don't want to sell them. People can't buy what you're not selling. Uh, so yeah. if we look and at... When go you ahead. got companies like to Toyota that's made an announcement that says, we are going 100% hybrid now, 100% hybrid, uh, which means that we're going to keep our gas cars and we're just going to go that route. And uh, same with lots of other car companies now, Ford and others, they pulled back and says, we're not going to make, you know, we're not going to hit our EV targets, but we're going to still work on hybrids. This is where I'm getting concerned, right? Because you've got the force of the auto industry kind of communicating and they're, you know, paying for um, commercials, telling you the benefits of a hybrid and that this is why they've chosen it. So that's just going to be a battle of misinformation and, um, and, and trying to decide, you know, what does the consumer get at the end of the day, get out of this. Ford scraps all electric yeah. SUV plan yep. saying drivers want hybrids, but really Ford is very good at making a profit selling uh, cars powered by splody juice. <laughs> and they are not good at making a profit on battery electric vehicles. <laughs> uh, yeah. Ford says it's all new vehicles must make a profit in right. 12 months. There yeah, there is. you go. That's Play. that's the uh, admission right there, right? The only reason they're not going to do an electric vehicle is because they can't create an electric vehicle today that is going to be able to make a profit in 12 months. And if they can't make a, pro a vehicle that profits in 12 months, they don't have the, um, the financial status that they used to have to be able to invest heavily in these kinds of R&D work and this kind of like wait for the profits to come in the future, they had to pull back. They had to pull back big time. And so now the CFO of Ford says, okay, look, we can only invest in things that's going to generate profit within 12 months. Okay, so what are they? Take my ice cars. I've already, <laughs> you know, brought it down low, add a battery to it, call it an electric vehicle, and we're good to go. And that's what we're going to focus on now. And if Ford is making their own batteries or using a domestic partner to make those batteries, those batteries should, at least for now, qualify for um, infrastructure rebates uh, for the manufacturer of those batteries. It doesn't matter how many cars it goes into, you're paid per kilowatt hour. So one huge battery, it's not like you're, you're getting extra credits the way you do when you divide it by hybrid uh, to get more. It's the same number of dollars for every kilowatt you make. So then, of course, but that's just America. Uh, surely the rest of the world's doing better. Uh, is it? Because we've got Stellantis over here. Mm -hmm. Benchmark hybrid powertrain to more nameplates to satisfy European customer demand. 30 hybrid models mm -hmm. by this year and six new launches planned over the next two years. Mm -hmm. With an electrified dual clutch transmission. That sounds complicated <laughs> and prone to problems. Uh, <laughs> Exactly. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's let, funny. Let's, oh, let, let's see the photo. Yeah. So you still have the go. huge engine at the front. <laughs> mm -hmm. You're adding parts to this whole thing. Um, yeah. The, the, uh, Where the heck is the battery? You, yeah. Ba Please BYD. tell me it's not that it's little tiny. blue thing. It's, it's tiny. Yeah. The B BYD, of course, it's, it's sale, it, it actually started to reduce in sales of EVs, but it made it up in big time through its sales of hybrids, new electric vehicles. That's what they call it. Um, yeah, this is concerning. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's going to be a, a true battle out there. The, the question is, like some people are saying that, well, okay, so right now, pure electric vehicles are getting close to price parity with ICE cars. Now, if you have ICE cars and you're adding batteries to it, right, you're adding cost to it. So it's not like um, they're going to be cheaper. But when, what happens when the lithium iron 
uh, prices continue to plummet like it has been. These cost of the batteries is which is that makes up the most of a cost of an electric vehicle on a fall. And so this is where it's, it's like a it's almost a no brainer at this point that EVs are the winner and it's going to be a winner like pure EVs. Well, I will tell you a hybrid certainly seems like a parody of an electric car. Okay, so we've got this guy here. Mm. This one shouldn't come as any surprise. It turns out charging stations are a cash cow for nearby businesses. There you go. That's good news, but it's no news to us because you and I have stopped at chargers and the first thing we do is use the restroom, wash our hands, and then of course, I need a snack. I need a snack. I need to patronize this business because I am here. And uh, having been on the road for however many hours, I require a Gatorade or uh, a snack. So that's just kind of skipping by that one. But we will end on a high note because I know you love a good giggle. The world quakes with America's $6 trillion engine. It's mm -hmm. the end of hydrogen, electricity, and even nuclear energy. What is it? It's Stellantis's hybrid engine. <laughs> the dual. <laughs> Why flex fuel engines are at the heart of their mobility strategy. <laughs> All right. Oh, I love and, it. The article that says, hybrid. we've discovered yeah. something new. Gasoline is going to be the <laughs> future. It's going to be the future. <laughs> Texas tea, bubbling crude, uh, black gold. It's genius. But some of it is corn which is okay. already yellow so that's close to gold ah, that's these funny. articles are that's magical what I mean, though, and I, you're going to see more and more articles like that and guess what consumers will be confused and they will believe it i mean how many times people have told me right hybrid uh, hydrogen cars <laughs> okay uh, come on guys yeah. really hydrogen mm -hmm. uh, i did have an uber driver ask me um what do you think is going to going to last mm. going to be better? Is it going to be hydrogen or, or battery? And mm. it's like, oh, well, good thing we've got some time together, my friend, because <laughs> uh, for batteries to take over, yeah. all we need is some modest improvements in engineering. And for hydrogen to take over, all we need is new physics that yeah. doesn't currently exist in this universe, maybe in a different universe. It doesn't uh, perniciously leak out between the atoms of the container designed to hold it. Mm -hmm. But we live in this universe, so it's more challenging and makes no sense. If, you've, if you're going to use it to power an electric motor, just use the electricity. So, Guys, what did we miss? What do we misunderstand? What is the genius of hybrids that Herbert and I are just not smart enough mm. to recognize? Uh, and I'm not saying hybrids don't have a place. I'm not saying that anything doesn't have a place except hydrogen. Uh, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of pieces here, and we may have overlooked some. Mm -hmm. uh, do me a favor. If you would, head on over to Brighter with Herbert. Check out what he's up to. He's a fantastic guest. I love especially checking out the Cyber Bulls. Uh, Jeff and uh, the crew are uh, just very, very sharp folks. And Jeff is one of those people that knows a lot of things that I don't. And mm -hmm. I uh, get a lot of value from that. Alexandra does too, but it's all stock stuff. And it's like, uh, my head's full. I can't do it. So uh, everybody else, you know, like, subscribe, do what you do. Stay tuned, stay juicy. And I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots in a hybrid.